Hey everyone, in this episode, we're gonna talk about getting patients back into your office. Now, in past episodes, we've talked about how to bring patients in because they haven't you know, wanted to come in because of the pandemic and everything like that. But this time we're gonna talk about what to do when you have patients that are late for coming in for follow-up and they're late for returning to the office to see you for the care that they need and then they end up in your office because whatever condition they've had has been exacerbated or they miss an appointment completely and you miss out on the ability to see them and provide care and you also miss out from the opportunity to um, you know charge them and get insurance payment for the care that they're supposed to be getting and we know that patients that come in on a regular basis get better care and have better outcomes and so it's a win-win for us when we're able to see patients to provide good care to satisfy all the different quality metrics out there and also to avoid the complications from illnesses or things that are unchecked because we haven't had the opportunity to see them and also from a financial and revenue standpoint it's important to see patients on a regular basis so that you continue to make you know rent and keep the lights on and your employees employed and provide for your family and everything like that so it's a win for everybody if patients come in on a regular basis the problem is that oftentimes we sit here as physicians and we wait for them to come in. And then we say, well, why didn't you come in three months ago when you know your, your leg was turning green and gangrenous or you're so far behind on immunizations, now it's gonna take three visits for us to actually catch you up. Well, I didn't think of it. I was busy, it was a pandemic. I had other stuff on my mind, like everybody's busy. I don't get the oil changed in my car or my car washed as often as I should because I'm busy and other things take precedence and weeks slip by and, and those sorts of things. So I don't know why we expect our patients to just miraculously decide, well, it's been three months. I think they said three months, it was three months ago. So I have no idea, I don't remember. I'll call and make an appointment, but I have to wait on hold and I called, but the line was busy or I sat on hold or something Somebody said, um, be right with you, but then it took a while and it was really difficult to make an appointment. And then another few weeks slipped by and then eventually, you know, it, something bad happens, some, some thing that brings it to the level of coming in to be seen. So what can we do to avoid that? So I'm going to talk through five different things that you can do in order to make sure that your patients follow up when you want them to. The first one is to make an appointment before they leave. What does this do? It puts something on the books and it is so much more likely that the appointment will happen if it's on the books when they leave. You have to make it as low of hurdles. What we have to do is decrease all of the hurdles that we possibly can to get patients to come back into the office. The biggest hurdle is calling to schedule that next appointment. So if you make the appointment before they leave, then the likelihood that they're going to keep it is extremely high. Mostly because, well, one, it's for their own good and they know that they need to come in. But two, otherwise they're gonna stand you up and they don't wanna do that because they like you as a physician and they wouldn't do that to you and, and whatnot. But also because it, the, there's a hurdle of calling to cancel the appointment and find another appointment time and wait on hold and do all those things. If you, it, That's a challenge enough that people are like, okay, well, I've got this appointment. I wouldn't have made it otherwise, but it's already on the books. They, they made the appointment for me. So I'm just gonna go to the appointment at the appointed time. And so making an appointment before they leave is an extremely important thing to do. I know that I'm usually in charge of taking our dog to the groomer. And if I don't make the appointment when we check out, when I check out and I pay for the dog and everything like that, then the likelihood of getting an appointment when my dog is in need of it is very low. And it's very likely that he's going to be a couple of weeks shaggy when finally I'm like, I wonder if I made an appointment. I don't remember if I did. And then finally get around to it and they're booked out for a few weeks and it has to be convenient for me. Otherwise, I'm going to forget or not do it again. There's just so many hurdles that stand in the way. So make an appointment before they leave. The best way to do this, if you have a scribe, which I highly recommend, I actually have a workshop where I teach physicians, whether you're employed, uh, primary care, independent, hospital owned, whatever your circumstances, whether you're a specialist or a primary care physician, I have a a, a, a course, it's a little workshop that walks through exactly how to get a scribe. The best thing to do is have your scribe make that appointment for them before they walk out. During the visits, my scribe is making their next appointments, writing them on a little card. And when I say, okay, we're going to see you back in two months, she hands me the card. I hand it to the parents. We leave the room and everyone already has their appointments on the books. She doesn't see if they're, you know, well, does Tuesday the 14th work? No. How about Friday the 21st work? You know, she doesn't do that back and forth. She puts an appointment on the books, knowing that if it doesn't work for them, then they can just call and cancel it and reschedule for another time. But 
it's Friday at 4 p.m., so it's likely that Friday at 4 p.m. is probably a decent appointment time for you because you made this appointment. So we're going to make the next appointment in two months on a Friday at 4 p.m. Or Tuesdays at 11 a.m. works well, so we're going to make an appointment again Tuesdays at 11 a.m. because that works. And so that's the first thing that I want you to do is make sure that whenever possible you're making an appointment before the patient leaves the room. Now, the second thing that you can do if you cannot make the appointment before they actually leave is reference the specific time when they can come back in. What that means is you say, okay, I want you to give me a call on St. Patrick's Day. I want you to give me a call on the 4th of July. I want you to give me a call after Halloween has passed because then at least you're triggering them to remember, okay, he wanted me to call and he said Halloween, which was kind of an odd thing for somebody to say, but that's another way that you can trigger them to call back and schedule that appointment. I want to see you after Thanksgiving. I want to see you in the new year in January. Then they're more likely to remember, okay, he said January. He wants to see me then. I'm going to make an appointment on my way out. I'm going to call. I'm going to um, stop at the front desk and make that appointment. And he said after St. Patrick's Day, he wants to see me again. So identify the time when you want them to follow up so that they remember when you do that. If you just say three months, it's like, well, what month is it anyways? But if instead you do the math for them and say, okay, three months from February is two plus three is five is May. Okay, I want you to come in in May. Just doing that little showing your work out loud is enough to remind people, okay, that he wanted me to come back in May. And I can tell you that that helps patients to remember when they're supposed to be seen back so that when they call in in a week or they call in in a month or two months, they'll remember he said he wanted me to see, see him back when school got out for summer or, you know, when, um, you know, uh, Husker games, football games started being played again. Oh, that's my cue to come back in and be seen again. Now, the third thing you can do, these are getting more active as we go. The next one that you can do is keep a list of patients that need to be seen and reach out to them proactively. Now you have an EMR and your EMR makes it easy to run reports. There's all the EMRs have ways, some of them are easier than others, to run reports of delinquent visits. So you can see who is due for a visit, who is due for a checkup, who has ADHD and hasn't been in for five months, who has COPD and hasn't been in in six months and just keeps getting refills and calling and getting refills and calling and getting refills and getting it pushed down when they really should be in getting checked, getting tests done, those sorts of things. If you have a delinquent report list for whatever thing that you follow, whether it be skin checks or um, colonoscopies or um, you know blood sugar checks or foot exams or whatever it might be, there is something where there's a chronic illness that requires ongoing monitoring. And so what you want to do is keep a delinquent report list and have your staff work on that. They have downtime. There's time that they certainly could do things to help you. And what you want to do is you want them to be working on that list and saying, who can I get on the books for this week? There are open spots. If I proactively reach out, then it's very likely that a patient will say, yes, I will take that spot because I'm glad that you called because my dog's hair is getting really long and I've been meaning to call and I just have keep forgetting to do it. And so here, I'm going to make that appointment since you reached out and reminded me. Same thing goes, okay, it looks like it's been about five years since your last colonoscopy. We would like to get you on the books. Does this day work? Now that brings me to my second one is because what I often see is, or not my second one, now we're at the f one, two, three, four, fourth. Make it easy for patients to say yes. What that means is instead of just saying, hey, you're due for your checkup, please call our office when you have time. It's like, okay, I got that text message, but I was at the grocery store and I you know, clicked it so it was red, but then I never circled back to it because it just reminded me to call and why are they texting me right now? I'm at the grocery store. How could this be a convenient time for me to call them and try and schedule an appointment? I don't have my calendar with me, anything like that. So what you wanna do is instead of just saying call to get your appointment scheduled, you want to be proactive and have your staff be suggesting appointment times. You look at the schedule and you say, okay, this patient typically comes in on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning. Perhaps they have Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the schedule and say, hey, does next Thursday at 10 a.m. work to get your checkup done? And what that's going to do is then all they have to do is say yes. Instead of call our office, wait on hold, push to, speak to the receptionist, find out what the deal is, what appointment they need because they're not even sure. Instead, all they're having to do is say yes, and then your staff can take care of actually scheduling that visit at 
Thursday at 10 a.m. because you ask them proactively, does Thursday at 10 a.m. work for this appointment? It's totally different than just call us or you're due for your annual checkup or you're due for your flu shot or something like that. Those are so easy to forget. But when it's like, oh, I got this text message and they're actually holding that spot for me and does that work? Okay, I can look at my calendar because I'm at the grocery store, but I don't have to call anyone on the phone. Okay, it looks like that works. Yes, done. And then you can send them the follow-up and everything along those lines so they have the information that they need. And from there, you've got that appointment on the books. And the last thing that I want to tell you, the fifth one is text patience. Nobody likes talking on the phone anymore. Comment yes below if you hate when you get phone calls. I'm always looking at my watch. I'm like, okay, ignore. It's often a robocaller. It's something that could have been an email or a text message. There's very few people that I want to talk to on the phone on a regular basis, and your patients are the exact same way. You have to be texting your patients. If you're not texting your patients, you are leaving appointments. You are leaving money on the table. You're leaving patients uncared for because patients answer their text messages. You know that it's okay to have 10,000 unread emails in your email inbox, but you like to keep your text messages at zero unread messages, and patients are the same way. And so what you do is you text them. There's a million different services out there that allow you to text patients to get them the information that they need to get them in your office. You can tell them about new services you offer. You can remind them to get their annual checkup. You can remind them to get their flu vaccine. All those different things that you can do when you can text patients. And then you can say, hey, Dr. Boucher has a opening Friday at 9 a.m. Would you like to come in to do your kindergarten physical? Sure, that'd be great. No, that doesn't work. Okay, well, how about um, three Thursdays from now at 10 a.m.? Perfect. That does work. Thank you. And then the appointments on the books. You have to make it so easy for patients. If you want to sit in your office and if you want to wait for patients to call you and to think, oh, I need to take time out of my day to make that phone call, to push to, to wait on hold, to try and schedule that appointment, to go back and forth with the calendar and all those different things, and then come into the office when I'm otherwise busy, then you're just going to be waiting. And you're not going to be seeing patients that need to see you and that you need to see to provide good care and to keep the lights on and your employees employed. So instead, be proactive. I know that there's a lot of people that always say, well, that's not the way it's been done. Physicians don't call and make appointments. Physicians don't reach out. They wait for the patients to need them. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. But I have a feeling that since you've watched this video, you're probably of the type that says, okay, it's good to have patients coming into the office on a regular basis. And here's some strategies that we can do that actually take nothing as a physician work. It's all stuff that my staff can do and those that are trained uh, and qualified uh, to help me to be delegated to. And so I'm going to have them do that instead so that I can focus on what I can do and we can keep providing good care. We can keep patients coming into the office, keep providing the care that we need and creating the revenue opportunity that is important to keep our practice thriving. Hopefully this makes sense. So what you're gonna do is ideally you're gonna make their next appointment for them before they leave. Second, you're going to make it really easy for them to remember that they need to be seen in May, they need to be seen in August, they need to be seen in November by telling them what month they need to come back in. Third, you're gonna keep a list of delinquent reports and you're going to proactively reach out to patients so that they are reminded of those appointment times, so that they are reminded that they need to come back in for their preventative care, for their ongoing disease management. Fourth, you're gonna make it ridiculously easy for them to say yes by suggesting a specific appointment time for them to come back in to be seen rather than just the blast text message that says call to schedule your physical. And then lastly, and tied to all these others, is you're going to text patients because it is so important to be where your patients are and they are answering their text messages and you have to eliminate all those hurdles so that you can get them in. Hopefully this has been helpful. I have found that it makes it so much easier to get patients in when you do these things and it takes the burden off of you and the worry off of you and it keeps phone calls to a minimum because instead of patients calling and saying they need refills or what do I do about this, you're just proactively getting them to the office so you can provide that care and make the patients happy by making it really easy for them to get in and be seen. Hopefully this helps. Keep up the good work.